Welcome to this Q&A session with Ben Westbeach. What we're going to be doing is a kind of informal sort of discussion about the kind of stuff that Ben's been doing over the years. The first release that I you know, knew for you was the, the release with Brownswood, which mm. is uh, Giles Peterson's record label. Yeah. This was uh, so good today. soul music and uh, hip-hop. I grew up pretty much on the hip-hop and jungle. I lived in Bristol at this time in my life and that was a real influence, like the space that I lived in, the people that I was surrounded by. And just the music culture of the city really, um, really inspired me to write this track. The bass in it, you know, Bristol's quite a bassy city and um, that's why I put a lot of bass in this track. And I think just the surroundings that you're in and the people that are around you can really shape the music you make, you know, and just friends, influences. But it was the first track I ever made on my own. I used uh, Reason Rewired through to Cubase to make it and that was it. It's a really simple track. Wow, really? It's okay. a really yeah. cheap mic. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's a really nice. That version there is the one that you actually recorded at home. Yeah, 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 pretty much, apart from a mix down there. Yeah. Right, yeah. So it's you know it's a really it's really cheap to make. I didn't I think that's the key with this this track is that um, it's you can make it with you can make music with any program or anything and it just goes to show that you know you don't have to have like loads of animal gear, you can just do it on a computer and that's it. There was also the remix which I think was something that took it into a, a totally different direction. Yeah, I think this is an interesting example of how remix can really take you as an artist into a completely different world. Um, at, th at this time I didn't have a clue really about house music and wasn't really into it. And uh, this remix by Shinade really broke me into an, a completely other music scene. It was a really helpful remix for me as an artist and it, it pushed me into a different scene. vocals placed onto a, a totally different style I and mean, did it feel comfortable? Uh, yeah I mean I think you know that was that's an example of a really good remix and uh, we were really happy with that one yeah. Um, and yeah it, that I mean that track really opened my mind to house music um, as I said before I didn't really know a huge amount about house music before this remix came along and then I was like wow you know this yeah. is really interesting because I didn't think I liked house I was you know like a hip-hop head a jungle head into into like breakbeat music and I used to sort of look at house and think oh, I'm just not into that generally as music and then this really opened my eyes up to it and um, then I started sort of getting more knowledge about it and getting interested in a whole nother scene of music um, and that's what this record did for me really. What about the next one then? We've got this other track from the uh, the Brownswood album. My first album was literally just a, a bunch of music that I'd made and put together and that was it. I mean it's as simple as that. It wasn't There wasn't a huge thought process behind my first record whereas now I'm making a record with a lot more thought process having gone into it. I think it was the last one was just more a, a bunch of music um, that I'd made and almost through together, you know, and just okay. kind of got lucky with an album yeah. concept and it worked as a record, but um, I didn't go out, I didn't set out to make my first record, I wasn't like, right, I'm making my first okay. record, sure. I just made music over five years and then chose the best yeah. of that for an album. This one was me and a guy called DJ Dye uh, from Bristol who's known um, for his, his drum and bass productions and he was in uh, Represent with Ronnie Sides. Um, right. He helped make that album okay. um, and obviously yeah. he was in the band with Ronnie and um, was someone who I was, I started hanging out with in Bristol quite a lot um, through our love of skateboarding actually <laughs> brought right. us together, we were both sort of skateboarders. And, um, so I started hanging around with him and uh, then started making music with him first. It was, it was drum and bass, jungle. And then when I, this was when I'd been signed, I was looking for some more records for my album. 
and um, I phoned up an old piano player that I knew, an old friend, and um, asked him for some just road loops. I got about six or seven road loops over like 120 BPM, and then um, just picked one of those, took it to die, and he came up with a drum break for it, and then just made a loop got a bass player in and then got a bass line on it and then sort of produced a track like that. This was more my first sort of foray into uh, live music and using live instruments on a track whereas before it was all sample based, you know, using sample CDs or whatever. I came, I came across all vinyl, like sampling from vinyl. So this was really the first proper track I, I made really, you know, this is the, the first, as I would say, a professional track I made okay. this one. This one was just me, I think the, the interesting one about this one was how we wrote the song. Usually I'd write a song, sort of, you know, verse, bridge, chorus, or something around that sort of formula. But this one I can remember, um, Di just said, oh, well, just, just sort of freestyles and hum over the tune. And then I did that, and then he, he picked up some bits from it, and then made a melody out of the hums, and then I put made some vocals, some words to go with that, which is quite a different way of looking at making a song for me, um, but turned out quite interesting with this yeah. tune, I think. Then the West Beach! I've never felt your love so cloudy Get all excited when you're there me I made this record with Di as well. We just wanted to make, um, you know, a, 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 a drum and bass track, uh, which was really sort of for the dance floor. It was more orientated for the dance floor for this track. Um, but it just happened that it, it sort of crossed over yeah. to a different market as well. A lot of people got into this who weren't necessarily into drum and bass. Um, and it was sort of the last thing that I sort of really wanted to do drum and bass wise before I put that sort of era of my life to okay. bed. It uses a sample from a track by Linda Williams called Elevate Your Minds, which was the, the piano sample that, that Di found and we used. Um, and then had to clear, we had to clear that sample as well, so we lost a lot of publishing on this record. If you use a sample and your, your track sort of gets big or, or quite big, then you must clear the sample, otherwise you're going to lose a lot of money yeah. and then maybe get sued, you know, if, you're, if your track does get big. And the live side is quite important to you, isn't it? I mean, you know, I've seen you've been incorporating the, the live singing into your, your DJ sets because you're doing DJing as mm -hmm. well, aren't you? Yeah, I think that's really important, you know, if you if you do want to be a DJ to have something extra in your shows that really sort of makes you stand out because there's so many DJs these days, everyone, pretty much everyone I know, you know, is DJing in some sort of, you know, some mm. some place or other. So I think it's really important if you have another skill to incorporate that in, whether you're going to use like an Ableton Live setup or, you know, DJ and play an instrument at the same time or sing or whatever you can do. I think that makes it interesting. Collaborations, um, we've got here with uh, Jazz and Over. Yeah. Um, so these guys, you know, they, they make some amazing uh, music. I mean, what was it like to work with them? Um, that was quite a dream come true as well, doing a, a feature with Jazz and Over. They were people that I always looked up to, you know, when I started making music. Um, they're a German collective um, of DJs and producers. Um, and yeah, they just they with this album that they they did, it was a very a live concept album, and it was all all the instruments were recorded live, which is really interesting to me. And um, in this track, it featured like it's almost like an orchestra behind me. So, you know, being as a soul singer, it's I think that's one of the it, that's one of the things you look look forward to doing is, is doing it with an orchestra. Mm -hmm. I wasn't in the room with the orchestra, but they recorded it all afterwards. And yeah, yeah. It was a really amazing process. I used for the first time a U47, a Neumann U47 mic, which is now the mic I pretty much use all the time to record my vocals. As a singer, you can search through mics and mics and mics until you find that one for you that really works. Okay, yeah, and this sure. happened to be the experience that, that showed me that. Ah. I got sent about two tracks and they was like, which one do you want to do? And I yeah. chose this one. 
and um, a friend of mine, Jose James, a jazz singer, got sent another one and we both got together one night and we, we listened to it and we were thinking, you know, should we do this? Is this, you know, can we, can we do this well? And we both decided to do it and then two weeks later we both done the tracks and they came out really great but right. you never know what it's going to be like when you collaborate with someone on, on an album because you don't know how that album's going to sound. Let's talk about the stuff that you're involved with now. So, you know, you're, you're not with Brownswood anymore and you're now with Strictly Rhythm, mm. which is a, a, a big difference in terms of you know labels. With Strictly Rhythm, I mean, how did that come about? I had a friend that worked at Strictly Rhythm at the record label, and um, he just Facebook messaged me and said, have you ever thought about making a house record? And um, I phoned my manager up and asked him, you know, is this a, you know, is this a good idea for us? I would quite like to make a house album. Um, and then that was pretty much it. The week later we had a meeting with the record label and they said yes to, to doing it. It's turned out actually, actually to be a really fun record to make because I get to work with pretty much whoever I want to work with and uh, almost take them out of their box as producers because all of them are quite house, like housey, housey producers but the tracks that I'm making with them are sort of less housey and I'm making more of a listening album that's house inspired. When you, you make an album with other producers, you can either go in and say, let's start a track from fresh, me and you, you know, and see what happens, which can go either way, you know, either you can get on really well and it really works, yeah, or you'll be yeah. sat in the studio for the day just, you know, clashing heads and it won't work. I mean, that's rarely happened with this album with me, which is great. Um, or you can just get instrumentals from a producer, which most producers will have, just sort of lying about or a, de a demo reel as it's called I think. Working with producers all over the world is a lot easier obviously with the internet and you can just do your work, send it over to them, they can do their work and yeah, yeah. you can work like that. I have a friend who does a house um, a house duo called Zombie Disco Squad who are really you know great great house producers and they one of them lives in Berlin and one of them lives in London, they work like that all the time, mm -hmm. you know, so I think it's, it's possible to even form collectives with people world over to make the music you want to make just yeah. using the internet, which is yeah. like, amazing. Just say a big thanks to Ben for coming down, so if you can give him a round of applause. <laughs> thanks all for listening, That's really, <laughs> honestly, it's really, really nice. Hi, I'm Ben West Beach, and I'm currently working with people like Henri Schwartz, MJ Cole, Motor City Drum Ensemble, and George Levin on my new record. It's been really great to give this music production masterclass a point blank. I think it's a wonderful, wonderful place to learn, and uh, there's a lot of talent in this college, and I'm looking forward to hearing some of the music that they've come up with.